a true David versus Goliath matchup as the Denver Dream host the Seattle Mist next. Nothing like a strong woman that takes what you want. That's powerful. We make history when you step on that football field. Now's the time to release that anger, that pain on them. Do you believe in miracles? They don't deserve no mercy. Them get put down or they get laid down. The most successful people in life have failed. We have failed. Everything we've ever asked for is right in front of us right now. So let's get it. LFL football night has arrived to the Mile High City. Welcome inside the broadcast booth of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Folks, we've got a matchup of the Denver Dream and the Seattle Mist. The Seattle Mist being the number one ranked team in the LFL right now. But you know what? A week ago, we saw an Omaha Heart team that was an absolute doormat in 2018 beat a good Nashville Knights team. So I ask you, Bobby Huco, are the Denver Dream capable of an upset of the magnitude we had last week? Possibly. They have to have their A game. Their best game ever has to come out tonight. They got some players on defense that have to step up. But you know what, though, for Seattle? I've been in this game 10 years. I used to coach against Michelson. I've never seen a team this talented. They have all fantasy players at every position. I love Denver, but I just don't see it happening tonight. Especially with that Seattle offense. You touched on it. Chris Michelson, one of the better offensive gurus in the game, and now he has the chess pieces. So if this Denver team has any shot, especially defensively, is there any key personnel that you're going to look to to step up tonight? Well, that's the key. They have to get after K.K. Matheny, the quarterback for Seattle. And it starts in the middle. Jara Floyd from Australia, she's tough. Stopping the A-gap, she has to play her best game ever in the free safety. Kelsey Cristiano, the ball hawk. She can go all over the secondary. She has to step her game up, but I think the key's up front. K.K. Phelps, a defensive end. She's a great player, great talent but she lacks the intensity. She has to play intense football tonight. Get after K.K. Matheny. If they all three play together, who knows, maybe. Well, you keep talking about the big three when you look at the Denver Dream defensive side of the ball. Let's talk about the Seattle Mist. You can say big three, big five, big eight. There's a lot of weapons on that side of the ball when we talk about the offense for Seattle. And you mentioned that K.K. Matheny is at the helm of that offense. The two-time Legends Cup champion quarterback is quietly feeding all these hungry mouths on this offense this year. And then you've got Stevie Schnorr, the bull. We're used to her leading this team rushing, but she's actually leading the Seattle Miss this year in receiving out of the backfield, has become a go-to target for one of her best friends, K.K. Matheny. And then Ali Alberts, the free agent signee from Chicago coming over, wasn't really used on the offensive side of the ball that much in Chicago, not the case here, as Chris Michelson has made her into a vertical threat. Good hands and deceptively good speed. I say the same thing about you, Bobby Huco. Michelson, I'm going to tell you what. I got to give him props. This guy, he could rest on his laurels. He's got a solid football team without recruiting. He goes out and gets my favorite player ever, Allie Alberts. Plays our offense, one of the best receivers ever. This guy recruits, and then he brings him in. All this talent, you'd think the talent would run the coach. No, he takes their game to a different level, challenges all of them. That's why it's the best team I've ever seen in the LFL. In fact, the LFL's only Hall of Fame coach, Chris Michelson, is the subject of our pregame feature as our own Heidi Goldsnick sat down with the Hall of Fame coach to talk about his LFL journey and the magical team he has here in 2019. Thank you, Mitch. When you think of legendary LFL coaches, for most fans of the game, the first name that comes to mind is Chris Michelson. Winning two Legends Cup championships, he's known as the greatest offensive mind in LFL history. But it's that dedication to teaching the game that has these players coming from free agency to Seattle every year. Often criticized for his approach by outsiders, inside the locker room, it's tough to find a coach that these players want to play for more. Coach Michelson, you have had a storied LFL career, but a lot of fans only see the animated sideline Coach Michelson. Who are you away from football? I view myself as a kind, loving, hearted individual. Uh, I have a daughter, so, you know, I'm a father, and I work for a big company, and that has a lot of stress, so I'm just a normal guy, you know, honestly. Um, I just get real passionate about things, and football happens to be one of them. You have received some criticism at times for your approach. Would you take anything back from your coaching style? No, not really. I don't regret anything. Um, 
you know, there's some times when maybe you um, misconstrue or there's a misperception about something and you might handle it a different way and then later find out it was differently or it was a different situation. But, you know, at the time, my thought process was one thing and I acted on that. So, you know, all I can do is just do me and, and everything else will fall in place. Coach, a lot of critics have said that you have unfairly stacked the Seattle Miss team to win a championship. How do you respond to those critics? I love that uh, question about being a stack team. These are all my players. These are all the players that I've developed. Uh, besides Allie Alberts, uh, every player that's on this team has gone through my system at one point or another besides the rookies that we have this year. Uh, so it's something I've built. So really I'm not stacking anything. I'm just building off of what I've been building for the last 10 years. Michelson has a very different persona off the football field, but despite his cool persona in our interview, you can see the passion that Michelson has in his eyes. This Hall of Fame head coach could be hoisting his third Legends Cup trophy in 2019. Back to you guys. Thanks, Heidi. We are definitely big fans of Chris Michelson. Now it's time to lace him up. It's the Seattle Mist versus the Denver Dream next. Back to LFL football night. Before we get underway, let's go down to the field. Guys, moments before the start of the game, I'm with Denver Dream head coach Marcus Janelle. Coach, you are up against a Goliath in the Seattle Mist. How do you make your team believe that they can not only compete tonight, but win? Well, we know that for a fact that we've been putting in a lot of practice, a lot of work, a lot of film, and it's always preparation. Prep, prep, prep. But then there's some things that got to go your way, a little bit of luck, but it's always faith. Always have faith in what you do, what your goals are, and accomplish them with co conviction, convince, and a lot of attitude. Thanks, Coach. Well, unfortunately for Denver Dream fans, Coach Marcus Janelle will not be suiting up tonight. Hopefully his team has the same level of confidence. Back to you guys. Marcus Juniel coming in with his best Tony Robbins. And if that confidence is going to sustain, the young Ryan Brittany Ryan Perea, Perea the second-year quarterback, is going to have to have a breakthrough career-type season Certainly a rough start in 2019, but she is capable of better numbers than that. Right, she's not going to blow you away with Mahomes-type numbers, but she is a fiery competitor. I like the way she plays quarterback. First and 10 from the 15. That looked like Tahara may have jumped, and that's caught. Brittany Gethers, an early completion from Brittany Perea. A nice-looking 10-yard pass in the flat. Let's meet the starters. Brittany Gethers, center. Jara Floyd. Tight end. Tahira Williams, tight end. Kashayla Yunus, wide receiver. Jessica Poole, wide receiver. Bree Quintana, running back. Brittany Perea, your quarterback. The Denver game plan is to get the running backs to football. K Mac and Quintana and grind that clock. Look at Jade Randall fly through the middle as we meet Seattle's defense. Jade Randall, defensive end. Stacey Jackman, DN. Stevie Schnorr, middle linebacker. Allie Alberts, free safety. Kira Williams, safety. Christine Cortez, cornerback. Dominique Malloy, corner. The defensive game plan for Seattle is to go after the quarterback. Watch for Randall and Jackman to come off the edges hard at Perea. Perea from under center, again to Eunice. So Kashela Eunice getting the start ahead of Liz Kamak. And that's kind of a surprise development. They were very high on Liz Kamak, but Kamak has missed some practice time, so Eunice will get the start tonight. Liz Kamak is the only proven running back that Denver has. I'd be really surprised if she doesn't get a lot of touches tonight. So after that loss, setting up a third and 12, Brittany Perea coming off the sideline. We've seen this in back-to-back -back weeks. Some of the younger quarterbacks are having to go to the sideline instead of using hand signals. That's going to wear some of these quarterbacks out in the fourth quarter. It's just not a developed offensive system. They need to get that in. A sweep right to Eunice. And there's that Seattle defense again. This time, Allie Alberts and Stacy Jackman all over it. That'll set up a fourth and 11 from the 24. Already early in this game, the defensive ends, Jade Randall and Stacy Jackman are jacking up the Denver offensive linemen. Denver now up against it, a fourth and 11. We saw him have some success with Brittany Gathers on that first and 10 play on the wheel route. And they have another weapon on this offense that they're high on, Jessica Poole, the second year wide receiver, flanked to the bottom of your screen. So here we go from under center, inside handoff. Bree Quintana, the power back, has no chance as Denver 
will turn it over on downs. That is pretty much given up. I hate that call by Marcus Janelle. It's fourth and 12. They run right up the gut. They're not blocking anybody on Seattle. They pretty much just hand the ball over in their own territory to the most powerful offense in the LFL. And now the Denver offense thoroughly confused, thinking they picked up the first down on possibly a fourth and short call. It was a fourth and 11. So poor play calling on the sideline and even worse awareness by the offense. KK Matheny and this high-powered Seattle offense will take over on downs. Let's meet their starters. Katie Whelan, center. Jade Randall, tight end. Savannah Wood, tight end. Dominique Malloy, receiver. Allie Alberts, receiver. The Bull, running back. KK Matheny, quarterback. An offensive coordinator's dream. They're all all fantasy football players. Pick your poison. Wasting no time. The Seattle offense on a double pass intended for Jade Randall. You saw the arm of Ali Alberts, who was actually the backup quarterback with the Chicago Bliss. Randall completely burnt defensive back Roy. She was wide open. Ali Alberts just couldn't pull the trigger and get it to her. That should be six black points black for black Seattle. Black. One of the few things Ali Albert's not good at potentially is quarterback. An all fantasy safety and all fantasy wide receiver. She did show you an arm though. Nice tight spiral just overshooting Jade Randall. Now a second and 10 from the Seattle 22. They're going to go to the Speedster. That's Dominique Malloy. Malloy not giving up a five yard carry. I tell you what, for her size, she packs some serious punch. Absolutely, she's got speed too, one of the fastest players in the LFL. I like that plate selection, and I like the execution. A short motion by Allie Alberts, a crack back block. You get the ball to the speedster outside, solid game. Seattle now going with a hurry up offense. Third and five with Malloy and Schnorr in the backfield. They're gonna go to the Bull. Bull sweeping left, waiting for her blocks. At the five, into the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. That is a Rocky Mountain high for Stevie Schnorr as they do a little surfing in the end zone here in Denver. Watch this lead block by Wood out front. You got the crack back block by Allie Alberts on the defensive end. Then Wood drives her back into the end zone, opens it up for Schnorr. Great execution by Seattle. And I gotta tell you, Dominique Malloy, all five foot two, 120 pounds, also got a great block there to spring Schnorr as Seattle gets on the board early, six to nothing. Wow, what a difference in offensive philosophy and details. The blocking of Seattle is outstanding. On the other side with Denver, they thought it was fourth and two and not fourth and 12. They thought they got the first down. Just bad game management. So now the two point attack from the three yard line. KK Matheny from the shotgun, receivers to the right. A delayed pass into the flat, caught by Jade Randall as Seattle now leads it eight to nothing. The defensive end has to cover Randall. That's just basics. A little execution like that, a delayed, they're on the board. Bad play by the Denver defensive end. Seattle drawing blood first, up eight to nothing. Back after this. Back to LFL football night, and several people from the Pacific Northwest, they do it different up there, Bobby Huco, have made their way to the Mile High City. Is that the Blue Man Group, or is that from the Seattle fan base? I tell you what, those misfits travel oh, well right. for the Seattle Mist, and they're enjoying the possibly on, the franchise's best ever season on the field. The Misfits, probably the best fan base in the LFL. They travel to games like this in Denver, showing great support for the Seattle team. I love it. So the Denver offense back out on the field. That's a handoff again to Eunice. She'll be limited to a three-yard carry. A great tackle by Kiara Williams. There was a quick hole there for Eunice to get through, but the defensive backs are so close to the line of scrimmage. Williams was right on the ball, and at the point of the attack, there's nobody better than coming up there than Allie Alberts and Jade Randall. Yeah, and it looks like this Seattle defense is not fearing Brittany Perea's arm at all. You can see they are stacking the defensive box. Even Kiara Williams and Allie Alberts, the safeties moving up, along with corner Christine Cortez on a second and seven, and Eunice running right into the teeth of that defense. She'll be limited to a four-yard carry. So what's happening here is there's no deception from Denver, and Seattle knows what's coming. 
No, you're right. You have to stretch the defense. The safeties right now are lining up five yards off the ball where linebackers line up. Perea's got to throw deep and get them playing deep. Right now, they're playing like linebackers, and they can't run through them. Throw deep to who, though? There's no real speed on this offense with the exception of Liz Kamak, the running back. Kamak finally getting back in the game on a third and three from the 22. A poor exchange from Stacy Harmon, the center and the quarterback, Brittany Perea. Perea does manage to get back onto the fumble, but once again, this offense faces another fourth down. It was a wishbone set, so if you're Seattle's defense, you know they're not going to throw the ball. You're going to get up on the line of scrimmage. They have no chance of making a first down. You've got to threaten the secondary. They have Poole, who's got speed, and they got kind of a mismatch. I think Poole's a better athlete than Cortez, number six. Give her a shot. That Seattle defense is again stacking the line on a fourth and four. Ball at the 21 of Denver. They're going to try toss right to Eunice. And that is Stacy Jackman and Allie Alberts all over Eunice as Denver will once again turn it over on downs. Just horrible play selection by offensive coordinator Mark Holm. Fourth and four to go into wishbone, no wideouts. So Seattle's defense just swarms over the whole backfield. They get no gain and turn the ball over again. Yeah, I got to tell you, the offensive play calling, even some of the personnel use, has been suspect at best for Denver. Well, they're playing to lose. They're not playing to win, which is a bad attitude. Even though it's the top team in the league, one of the best teams ever, you still got to try to win the football game. How about this field position for the Seattle offense? On the previous series, starting on the Seattle 22, now on the Denver 20, a first and 10, a spread offense. This is a jet sweep, Dominique Malloy. And Malloy getting to the second layer of the defense. Jara Floyd with a violent tackle. Let's listen in. Great tackle by Floyd, but it was eight yards down the field. Again, Seattle's execution and play selection, outstanding. The blocking, the crackback block by Ali Alberts, the lead block by Wood, it's fun to watch. A second and two, they're gonna go to the end zone, caught and lost. I'm not sure if that was deflected, Great coverage that time by number one, Brianna Roy, in the secondary for Denver. One-on-one -on -one coverage. It was good coverage, but KK Matheny was late on the throw. That should be a touchdown for Seattle. They're lucky it didn't get picked off. They can tee it up again. Now a third and two from the Denver 12. That's Alberts in motion, dropping back to pass. Matheny looking to the end zone and just missed her target. The Lumberjack, Savannah Wood. KK Matheny, she tried to place it instead of just throwing the football. Wide open, she could have underarmed it out there for a touchdown. Bad night so far for KK Matheny. Fourth and two for an offense. You want to be in this position where the run or the pass is available to you versus Denver, who's faced fourth and long all night, or at least early in this game. Matheny from under center. <laughs> That's Stevie Schnorr in the backfield. They're short yardage back, and it's going to go to the Bull. The Bull motoring past Eunice, and that'll move the sticks for Seattle. Denver's defense not big enough to tackle the Bull. They're trying to ride the Bull, and that's not good defense. So that was a four-yard carry, setting up a first and goal at the Denver 8. When KK Matheny's not hot, that is the beauty of this offense. You can hand the ball off to Stevie Schnorr. She's going to get you yardage. Seattle already up eight to nothing. Kind of a desperate situation early for this Denver defense. Matheny from the shotgun receivers flank to the right side. And she's going to take her time. Dropping back to pass. Rolling right to the end zone. And that's caught and dropped by Kiara Williams. Coverage by Kelsey Cristiano. In fact, we sat down with Cristiano to talk about this Denver defense. Kelsey, you're obviously up against a high-powered offense in the Seattle Mist. How much confidence does this defense have coming into tonight's game? We're feeling really confident tonight. I mean, we've got a ton of respect for these guys. This is one of the best, best offensive squads in the league. So um, we're prepared. We've been watching a lot of film, um, move some things around. So I'm feeling good tonight. The Denver defense and Cristiano, they're very lucky so far only to be down 8-0.
Second and goal. They're going to go to another speedster, Kiara Williams. Williams good for a four-yard carry. That's Brianna Roy on the tackle. Wow, Christiana got pancaked by Randall. She's asking her what she wants for breakfast. One of the best blocks I've seen all year long. A lot of speed in contradiction to the Denver offense. When you talk about Seattle's offense, you've got Dominique Malloy, Kiara Williams, and even Allie Alberts, we talked about it in the pregame show, has deceptively fast speed. They've got speed all across the board, and of course, they get the power inside of the bull, Stevie Schnorr. So a third and goal. They're going to go to Malloy. Malloy trying to get the edge. A hog line tackle. I'll tell you what, Jara Floyd is going for the neck. That's a violent tackler. They love Jara Floyd and the energy she brings that Denver defense. We've come officially to the end of one quarter of play. The Seattle Miss draw first blood, up eight to nothing. Somebody's gotta get fucking physical. Got it? Maintain your outside contain. You had a sack there, hon. All right? It's, I know, we need to do it. Simple as that. Good, I don't care. Tap him just like that, I don't care. Get physical. Come on, Bree. Turn it up. Let's go line. One yard. Welcome back to LFL football night. That is Marcus Juniel, the Denver Dream head coach and defensive coordinator, trying to urge on that defense for a goal line stand here. Well, he knows they have to make a stop early in the game. If not, if they let them go up two scores, this game could get ugly quick. Fourth and in goal inside the Denver one. And it looks like Seattle's going to bring the muscle with Stevie Schnorr and a really physical up front line. That's Kiara Williams into the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Again, great execution. Allie Alberts came down, cracked on the defensive end. Then the lead block by Stevie Schnorr takes him right in the end zone. Great play by Seattle. An eight play, 20 yard drive, taking up five minutes and 10 seconds. And the result. Seattle with a 14 to nothing lead, now lining up for a two-point attempt. Marcus Janelle, the defensive coordinator, cannot be happy with the effort so far for Denver's defense. The only one flying out there is Jarrah Floyd. So receivers flank to the right side. That's Albert Schnorr and Kiara Williams, who just scored. Schnorr in motion. Matheny to the end zone, threading the needle and getting it to Ali Alberts. As Seattle now extends its lead to 16 to nothing. Now, does Denver have the type of offense that can rally being down 16 to nothing already? Obviously not. We haven't seen them do anything. The only thing they did, they executed the swing pass, man-to-man -man coverage, which worked, but they never went back to it. So a first and 10 from the Denver 15. Perea finally dropping back to pass, looking across the middle, caught and dropped. Jessica Poole had a gift wrap 20 yard reception. Poole has Cortez beat, just a bad pass. You see it almost knuckling out there. If she leads Poole out front, that's a touchdown for Denver. It was underthrown. Cortez made a good play, but the ball was underthrown. And no excuses there in terms of pressure. Correa had a clean pocket and just missed Poole. That'll set up a second and 10 at the Denver 15 yard line. Seattle's defense going straight to man-to-man -man coverage. No safeties deep. If I was Mark Hall in the OC, you check off right now. You got one-on-one -on -one K Mac versus Cortez, a mismatch. A second and ten. They're looking to that side. Now rolling right. That ball was a dangerous ball, complete to KK Phelps. Phelps really making her name on the defensive side of the ball. Is getting some looks at tight end. They got lucky. It was a back shoulder pass by Brittany Perea. She got the ball out there somehow, completed the pass, got to hand it to her. KK Phelps, a big target for Brittany Perea. So they have some weapons with size. They just don't have a lot of speed on this offense, with the exception of Liz Kamak. Now a third and three from the 22. Perea dropping back, good protection, stepping up in the pocket and caught. Jessica Poole. A five-yard reception. That'll give a first down to this Denver offense. That looks like her go-to receiver. I like the way Poole runs her route. She finds seams in the coverage, gets open. Perea stepped up in the pocket, climbed the pocket, threw a strike. That looks like an offense right there. So a first and 10 
You could arguably say that was the biggest play of the night thus far for this Denver offense. Converting on a third and three with Perea finding pool. Now a first and 10 at the Seattle 23 yard line. That's pool in motion. Liz Kamak remains the tailback. They're going to go to Kamak. Left side toss. That defense is all over the run game. They're bringing a run blitz almost every play. Well, they finally started throwing the pass. I don't know why they waited. Mark Holland, the offensive coordinator, waited midway through the second quarter to start throwing the ball. They're completing passes, but he waited till they're 16 points down. So a second and nine after that one yard carry by K-Mac. I don't know, I think I would go to K-Mac. I think Jessica Poole and K-Mac are probably the best weapons offensively for Denver. That's the money makers right there. K-Mac running the football and Poole catching the football. An empty back set. This is Perea back to pass, stepping up again and tackled in the Let's open go! field. Let's go! That is Stevie Schnorr. You know her as the running back, also one of the better middle linebackers in the LFL. You would think the athlete that Perea was, one-on-one, -on -one, open field, in open space against the linebacker, she get around her? No, Stevie Schnorr is an awesome middle linebacker. She showed it right there. And Schnorr has really leaned down. This is the best shape that she said she's been in in her entire LFL career, and it's showing just with that speed out in the open field. Well, if you looked at the entire Seattle roster, there is nobody out of shape. Third and eight, rolling right to the end zone, open! Pass caught. That is Tierra Williams. Touchdown, Denver. Wow, where's that been all night? Tierra Williams ran right by off fantasy safety. Jade Randall wide open. Brittany Prayer delivered the football. They're back in this ball game. Only one score down. Give credit to this Denver offense for rallying. Mounting a six play, 35 yard drive that took up 520. Chris Michelson is beside himself right now about his defense. Letting Brittany Proyer run around like she is, thrown over top of their all fantasy safeties, that can't happen. Yeah, really an opportunity for the Seattle team to bury the Denver dream, but give credit to Denver, not giving up like they did all of 2018 and rallying in this game as they line up now for a two point attempt. This is Perea calling her own number. Jade Randall, like a rabid dog, chases down Brittany Perea. So our score remains 16 to six. Perea finding Williams on a 21 yard touchdown. Back after this. Christine, hit somebody! You're coming half ass! Hit somebody! Back to LFL football night. I think it's fair to say we've got a pair of the more intense coaches in the LFL with Marcus Juniel and certainly Chris Michelson. Chris Michelson right now very upset at Cortez and his entire defense. Denver's not going to blow anybody out. Seattle's thinking about championships. They can't let teams like this drive on them like they just did. That was a major confidence booster for this team, not just the offense. But here's Stevie Schnorr in the open field again, showing that athleticism. And you could see how leaned up she is from any of the previous seasons. We do have our first flag of the night. Illegal formation by the defense. That penalty has been declined. Results of the play, second down. So an illegal formation on the Denver defense. And in case you're wondering what that means, that's basically the two defensive ends, their outside shoulders, and about three yards back where the middle linebacker is. That is the defensive box. You cannot put a fourth defender in there. That's what Denver just got called for. They did put the fourth defender in there, but they still could not get down Stevie Storm. What a block by the center. Katie Whelan, she actually wailed on Floyd. He drove her to Boulder, Colorado, 20 yards down the field. So they declined that penalty on Denver, Seattle did. They're gonna take the nine yards, tack on another seven to Stevie Schnorr. The ball out to the Denver 19 yard line. They are just not able to tackle Schnorr with the head of steam that she gets up the middle. Again, the center, number four, Katie Whelan, just warehoused Jarrah Floyd again, just drove her 15 yards down the field. Floyd just followed number four for another big game. 
That was a major experiment for this defense. They were happy with the production of Bree Quintana at middle linebacker, but Jara Floyd is more athletic, so they gave her the start, and to this point, it's not really paying off for him. First and 10 from the 19, and Denver looks to have jumped. There are the flags, and Stevie Schnorr again in the open field. That'll be a seven-yard carry. So that makes it three successive plays, and over those three plays, Stevie Schnorr has racked up 23 yards. That was all Stevie Schnorr. She went up the middle again, then popped out for another seven yards. This is John Saborev. Our head referee, he's going to go explain Coach. this to Chris Michelson. Coach, 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 I think you got to decline Second this. That was a seven yard carry. The penalty is only going to give you five yards. You don't have to go to the University of Florida to understand that five is less than seven. I think Michelson's going to take the penalty, however. First and five. Because he went to the University of Florida with Bobby Huco, obviously. I think he wants to save the play. Heck with the two yards, he got another down. John Sabor being very Offside casual. by the defense. That penalty's been accepted five yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. So they're going to tack on the penalty, as you said. Chris Michelson wants the additional down. That'll make it first down. I'm with you, though. I would not do that. I don't know why Chris Michelson would want to do that, gain extra play instead of the yardage, but he did it. This Seattle offense, I don't think, is very concerned. Right now, they have this Denver defense reeling. First and five from the 14. Allie Alberts flanked to the right side, and you've got Kiara Williams and Schnorr looking to the flat, wide open. Stevie Schnorr bowling her way into the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Great play design. Christiana was too late getting over to Schnorr after she did the fake. And what do we have here? Oh, she's bowling. I tell you what, this Seattle offense is just having fun, almost as if you're practicing against air. Denver at times has shown they can play more physical defense, but the past couple series, they have not been any competition for that front line. We spoke about Cristiano before the game, how she's got to play solid at safety. She did not go for the fake and did not cover in the CD store in the flat, wide open, and she walked in the end zone. Seattle's offense Shawn electing Lund, once again to go Shawn for a two-point conversion. In case you're not familiar with the LFL rules, an offense after scoring a touchdown can elect to go for a one-point conversion from the one-yard line, or as Seattle's doing here, a two-point conversion from the three. Matheny from the shotgun. A release play caught way too easy. Jade Randall, and that extends Seattle's lead. 24 to 6. Denver did not want this situation, potentially being down in this game and on the verge of possibly being blown out. That was just way too easy. Jade Randall wasn't even covered. Number 13, Isaiah Walker, was responsible for Randall, but simply didn't cover. She was wide open. Perea in this Denver offense now find themselves trailing Seattle by 18 points, and we're not even out of the second quarter. Denver's offense has to do exactly what they did the previous time they had the ball. Oh, Offensive coordinator Mark Holum mixed it up really good. They moved down the football field and scored points. Really well, Bob Huco. Mark Holum did really well mixing it up. And as a result, Denver posted the six points. Now a first and 10 from the 15 as Brittany Preya looks over that Seattle defense. And at least they're spreading it out a bit here where Seattle's defense cannot focus on the run game. Perea buying time with her legs and now just getting rid of it as Stacy Jackman, the defensive end, was all over Perea. That was just a simple bull rush by Jackman. In fact, the entire Seattle defensive line just went right through the Denver offensive line. No blocking at all. Now Jackman, a great defensive end, is also known for some moves here. Watch this. Now you can see she's got the hip movement. She's got it all. Stacy Jackman is your complete football player. Wow, Jackman moves like Jagger. Second and 10. Ball remains at the 15-yard line. Are you talking about Tanya Jagger, the girl you dated in high school? Mick Jagger, Mick buddy. Mick Jagger, second and 10. Dropping back to pass. Under pressure, loses it. I'm not sure Stevie Schnorr knew that Perea got rid of that ball. Now a third and 10. Perea taking exception. 
with being slammed to the ground. Just a horrible, a terrible lookout block by Stacy Harmon in the center. You know what a lookout block is? No clue. Storm went right by her. She yelled, look out, Brittany. <laughs> Second and 13 from the Denver 15. And now you're getting in desperate situation. Make it third and 10. This offense, again, is not geared for long yardage plays and playing behind the sticks. Absolutely right. Pereira does not have a gun like K.K. Matheny does. You can't throw it down the field with rail shots. Third and 10 in the pocket, breaking down. And now we've got a fumble. Perea luckily gets back on the ball. Stevie Schnorr just wreaking havoc in the backfield of that Denver offense. Stevie Schnorr just blew up Liz K-Mack. I mean, you got to protect your quarterback. K-Mack obviously did not. We are at the two-minute break. Back after this. Back to LFL football night. Bobby Huco, Mitch Mortaza, and Heidi Kolsnick in a game where the hometown Denver Dream trail it 24 to six. Looks like they're gonna punt the ball out of the end zone. I don't know if I would do this if I was Denver because they're gonna, unless you have a great punter, they're gonna get good field position anyway. That looks like it's Jara Floyd, the Aussie back to punt. Played a little Australian rugby league. So perhaps she does have a leg here. We'll find out in a second. Fourth and 21 and blasts it up in the rafters. That'll hit the video board and drop back inside the 10-yard line. Make it exactly the 10-yard line. So that nets out about six yards. Well, write that down. You shouldn't punt if you can't punt. Well, I tell you what, she got a good piece of that ball. It went into the rafters, as we saw. But the rule is if it hits the board, wherever it falls down on the field, that's where it's going to be down. Right, but it's just the point of it is only went six yards. It did go six yards, but fourth and 21, this offense has struggled all the first half. There's no way they're gonna pick up that first down. I kind of agree with it, because you gotta stay in this game. You can't give Seattle a short field. And once again, they're at the 11. <laughs> <laughs> they got their short field. Do you think they're gonna score? First and 10, Bob, have hope if you're a Denver fan. We'll rally. 147 remaining, first and 10 at the 11 yard line. This is K.K. Matheny taking her time. High snap. Now looking to the end zone. Crossing pattern. Caught! Touchdown, Allie Alberts. What a weapon the free agent signee Alberts has become for this offense. There's no way Isaiah Walker can cover her one-on-one -on -one across the field for that long of time. You have to get to the quarterback. The Denver defensive front could not get to K.K. Matheny. She had all day to find Alberts, who ran across the entire field and simply ran away from Walker. Easy touchdown for Seattle. It is crazy the resurgence in Alberts career coming to Seattle. We knew her as an all fantasy safety in Chicago. We never knew of her as an offensive weapon. She has blossomed into perhaps the best two-way player in the LFL. That's the main reason that she came to Seattle this year, just to play offense. She knows she's a weapon. She wasn't used that way in Chicago, and obviously, she might be the top weapon Seattle has. So Seattle once again going for a two-point conversion. Dominique Malloy with that speed. The Denver defense had no chance as Seattle now extends its lead, 32 to six. Wow, delivering the blow. Can you believe that? Dominique Malloy, 5'2", 128, just leveled, just absolutely leveled Quintana, Bree Quintana, 155. Who would have called that one? You know what? Size is not mattering in the LFL that much over the years. It's the heart and passion. Dominique Malloy is one of those players, one of the most soft-spoken people you've talked to off the field. On the field, she's a bit of a savage. Savage, she absolutely destroyed Quintana. I would have never called that because Quintana can hit. Yeah, Brie Quintana and Jara Floyd on the defensive side of the ball are just getting worked by Seattle right now. First and 10 at the Denver 15. This is Perea back to pass over the middle. That ball just lofted to Jessica Poole. I'm not seeing Perea with the same zip that we're used to seeing come out of her hand. Not at all. In fact, the play was a bad design. Two receivers in the same area. You saw Poole come across. I don't think she was the intended receiver. Hit her in the hand. She actually should have caught the ball. So second and 10 
Denver still does have two timeouts remaining. A minute 40. If you can somehow manage a score here and build some momentum going into halftime, but you could ill afford to go four and out here and have Seattle score again. They could do it. You saw the play selection on that one drive, two drives ago by Mark Hollum. They went right down the football field. Second and 10, ball remains at the Denver 15. High snap over the head of Perea. Now Perea throwing across her body. An ill-advised pass nearly picked off. And we're seeing some pretty poor decision-making right now by Perea. The wheels are coming off this offense. Another bad snap by the center, Stacy Harmon. You got to keep your butt down, keep the ball low. Coach Perea's not big anyway, but you can't throw it over her head. Yeah, we've seen some difficulty with Stacy Harmon at center. They've tested multiple people and decided Harmon's their best bet. She's got to settle in a little bit. Brittany Perea is already having a tough time. She's got to get some help around her. She looks a little rattled right now. She had one good drive this game, but right now not looking good at all. That's Seattle front of Savannah Wood and Jackman pinning their ears back. Perea back to pass, trying to loft it. And this time it's caught. Caught by Jessica Bauman, a 13-yard completion. That'll give Denver a first down. Great poise under pressure by Perea. It's a boot action. She somehow threaded the needle, got it over Allie Alberts for the completion. First and 10 at the Seattle 22. So this Denver offense finally finding some light. And they're going to need to get a score. A minute eight remaining as the clock starts up again. Denver does have two timeouts remaining. This will be a great momentum builder for Denver if they can get points right before halftime. First and 10, this time a good snap back to Perea to the end zone. And just under thrown, but we've got a flag. This could be pass interference on Christina Cortez. Poole had Cortez beat. The ball was badly underthrown. It was so underthrown, they had to stop and come back, and that caused Cortez to go right through Poole. Pass interference by the defense, number six. 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic, first down. That really helps out this Denver hey, guys, offense. They can't tackle my fucking defense. Listen, you, you, you just, it was a PI. You're getting beat, what is going on? Open up and run with her. So you can come down on the ball. You can make a play. When you're looking over your head, even if you don't commit a pass interference, it's gonna be illusion that you did, okay? That is the Achilles heel for Seattle's defense tonight. Christine Cortez getting beat again by Jessica Poole. First and 10 inside Seattle's 12 yard line with 53 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Receivers flank to the right side, a crossing pattern. Again, that ball just floated out of the hands of Perea as Liz Kamak was wide open. And give some credit to Perea. She got the ball to Kamak. Kamak just dropped it, went right through her hands. It was a high ball. It should have been caught. It should have been a touchdown. She was open. She got open. Perea's got to put that right in her chest. Second and 10 now. Ball remains at the Seattle 12. Time really not a factor. They can try to maybe get a screen pass here, a draw play, as they do have two timeouts. They don't have to necessarily go to the end zone. They got the matchup they won again up on top. They got Poole going on a post. Perea stepping in the pocket, finding a lane. Touchdown, Denver. And that's a tool that not a lot of quarterbacks possess. Perea's got it. Mobility. She's got mobility. She's got the move. She doesn't have great speed, but you saw what she did. She sucked in Malloy, who has blazing speed, came flying in off the edge. He went boom, went outside for a touchdown. Now, that was a great opportunity by you, Bobby Huko. You mentioned Mick Jagger earlier. You should have said she got moves like Jagger. She does have moves like Jagger, but it was just one Jagger move, bang, outside. You know, you're only good with the hip hop and the future and stuff. You don't know any of the good classic rock. That's the problem with you, Bobby. I love classic rock, but I like my future, too. 45 seconds remaining. Look at Denver. There's life in that huddle and on the sideline. You can sense this building. The whole mood just changed. Chris Michelson cannot be happy at all. His defense, one of the tops in the league, is getting run over by Denver. Now the two-point attempt, no shot. Jade Randall shooting up the A-gap and tackling Liz Kamak, but the damage is done. 32 to 12, you're giving momentum and life to a team that really you should be burying right now. 
I wouldn't want to get Jade Randall mad at me. That's the second time she just laid people out. What a drive. Five plays, 35 yards, taking up only 59 seconds for the Denver offense. You know, if you take away that six-yard punt and the two drives in the first quarter where they didn't even try to move the football, it was a tight football game. Yeah, I tell you what, the score is not indicative of the play on the field right now. If you're a Denver Dream fan, you got to be feeling remotely good, as good as you can feel being down 32-12. to 12. Chris Michelson cannot be happy at all with his secondary. Cortez getting burned all night long by Jessica Poole. It's just un-Seattle-like. First and 10 at the Seattle 15. A little wheel route. And that's Schnorr in the open field. A 19-yard reception. KK Matheny to Stevie Schnorr. Denver just has no answer for the bowl tonight. Stevie Schnorr doing it from the backfield, catching a little circle pass out from fullback, takes it all the way down the field. Again, a 19-yard reception. Some talk on the field. I'm not sure if there was a flag. No, they're just going to spot it at about the 16-yard line. The refs tonight are calling a great game. Esperov is one of the best in the business, and it's showing tonight. Better than last week, a record 18 flags in Omaha. I think that's why we're still kind of hung over from that game. 18 flags, folks. And that's Stevie Schnorr up the middle for four yards. Katie Wheeling eight yards down the field blocking the middle linebacker. It is unbelievable how she is clear in the middle, taking the middle linebackers all the way down the field every time. Second and six, ball at the Denver 12. Look at the drop KK Matheny gets. That's about eight yards. Katie Whelan with a perfect snap back to Matheny. Crossing pattern. That's Allie Alberts to the goal line. And pushed out of bounds. They're going to mark her down inside the one. Watch the block again by Katie Whelan in the middle. It's a good screen, good hit by Randall. It's a pick play, or the old-fashioned rub. Opens up Allie Alberts for another big gainer. So a first and goal in all the momentum Denver had just gotten has returned back to Seattle. Toss left. That's Malloy. Touchdown, Seattle. When you have Allie Alberts cracking down on a defensive end like that, and the speed of Malloy going outside, it is simply unstoppable. So Malloy giving Seattle the edge back. Well, they had it, but the mojo going into halftime as now Seattle leads it 38 to 12 and will line up for a two-point conversion. I don't think this Denver defense has one stop all night long. They need to have some stops in order to win any football game. Great block here by Allie Albert, sealing the outside. Just get it to Malloy, and nobody's going to touch that speed. Touchdown, Seattle. So Seattle now up 38-12. to 12. An opportunity for a two-point conversion. As I said, I don't think you can discount enough the momentum that Denver had created for itself with that drive, the previous drive, but then Seattle, being the heavyweight champion they are, the number one ranked team, answers immediately. Seattle does elect to go for the two-point conversion. This is Matheny rolling right to the end zone, nearly intercepted by Kelsey Cristiano. KK Matheny clearly upset there. We've got a flag. Early indication this may be on Denver. Holding by the defense, number 15. Half the distance of the goal will we'll redo the try from the one and a half yard line. It will still be for two points. Indeed, it's going to be a hold on the secondary for Denver. That'll give Seattle another shot at this two point conversion. Let's fucking go on one, ready. That was clearly pass interference by Kelsey Cristiano on number four, Katie Whalen. A crackback block by Alberts and into the end zone. A beautifully set up extra point, but we've got yet another flag. And Allie Alberts still down. This does not look good for Seattle. She's in a lot of pain. You could see Alberts just in agony down on the field. A very concerned Chris Michelson coming out. This would be absolutely disastrous for the Seattle Mist. Old Star, when she takes her helmet off like that, that means she is really hurt. They're looking at her right knee. Watch, she comes on a crackback block against Moore. Watch her knee, it hyperextends. She goes in for the block, watch it, ow! 
That hurts watching. Oh, my gosh. I hope that is not serious. Alberts has certainly proven her worth both to the Seattle Mist and for years in Chicago. They could ill afford to lose her, especially heading down into the postseason. And that's a welcome sight if you're a Seattle Mist fan or any fan of the LFL. Alberts getting up and walking off under her own strength. Having had my share of knee operations, in fact, seven of them, if you're hurt real bad, you can't put weight on it. That's a great sign. I know she's limping, but at least she can put weight on it. You can see the look of concern on Chris Michelson. By the way, we still have one more play left here in the second half as Seattle has life in another attempt at the two-point conversion. You're right. That's the last thing you want to see on a game like this against Denver. You're one of your star players. Yeah, they have a lot of stars, but she is a superstar player. I just hope she's healthy. Yeah, we talked about it. Her and Jade Randall, arguably one and two, and you can mark them down either way as the best two-way players in the entire LFL. KK Matheny in the offense back out on the field. Yeah, trigger. Fucking trigger. Pull and get that for on one, ready, As you ready. listen in to the fire that KK Matheny brings to the Seattle Mist huddles. 8.6 seconds remaining. Ball backed up to the six yard line. Apparently the penalty was on Seattle on the play that Alberts got hurt. A shovel pass. That's complete. Jade Randall. Just a simple delay pattern by Randall. She holds one count on the line of scrimmage. The linemen come in. She goes out to the flat. Quintana way late getting over there. An easy shuffle pass by KK Matheny for a touchdown. We talked about the importance Jade Randall plays alongside Allie Alberts. They're on full display. The athleticism on those two for both sides of the ball, whether they're playing safety or receiver, they are weapons for this franchise. Now Brittany Perea and company out on the field. This should be the final play of the half. Perea buying time with her legs down the field, nearly intercepted. Christine Cortez, who's had an up and down, mainly down first half, in a great spot there to defend. I like the way the quarterback, Brittany Perea, fought some time, scrambling around, gave it a shot, threw it up, but Cortez made a great reaction, almost came out with a pick. I said the previous play might be the final play, so we've got time for one more. Perea does not have the arm that KK Matheny has, but they'll try to maybe work it underneath and get something. Like I said, not a lot of playmakers on this offense, with the exception of maybe Liz Kamak and Jessica Poole. Both are now flanked to the bottom of the frame. We've got a timeout down Guys, on the field. Guys, we're on it's fucking thirds. This girl's wide, she didn't see her. Wide open down here, nobody's on her. When we go umbrella, you guys have got to go thirds. The safety gets the middle, and you two corners got all the way back, okay? There's, there's five seconds. They have to go in the end zone. Jade's going to stay in the middle. I'm going to rush three, and Jade's in the middle, and all three of you are all the way back. Okay? Nothing should get by you. No way. Yeah, Chris Michelson, you, we've really known him as an offensive coordinator and really focusing on that side of the ball, but he really micromanages the defense as well. Yeah, that's a teaching spot for the head coach, Chris Michelson. He don't want to give up a bomb deep with three seconds left in the half. So you see the Russian three, but the safeties are way deep. There's no way Perea can throw the ball that far over their head. Perea with a deep drop at about the 10 yard line. We'll see how strong of an arm she has. No, she's gonna call her own number. Kind of a give up play. Tackled in the open field by Kiara Williams. And that will bring us to the end of one half a play. That was a wasted play by Denver. I don't understand it. You have no time left in the half. Throw it as far as you can. Maybe you'll get lucky, get a lucky bounce, maybe a pass interference, but no, they didn't try it. Yeah, if nothing else, a confidence booster for this offense. You were deflated now after Seattle rallied. You know, you got to go back to work and at least say that, look, we don't have a give up mentality here. We're going to continue to go after it. And as a coach, if you're Marcus Juniel, you don't want that culture. You know, you're going to take advantage of every play, every opportunity. And for us, we're going to go down to the field to the best looking member of this broadcast team. Guys, I'm with the bull, Stevie Schnorr. Stevie, another impressive half from the number one ranked Seattle Mist. How do you avoid a let up in the second half against a very good Denver team? 
You know what, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. We've had a lot of mistakes this first half, so it doesn't really matter what the score is right now. We're coming out, and every play we're just going to go 100%. It doesn't matter if we're up by 100 or up by 2. Thanks, Stevie. Guys, if the proof is in the past, this bull will keep on pushing. Back to you guys. Stevie Schnorr certainly had a great half of football as the Seattle missed lead it 40 to 12. Back with halftime. Stop it! And if you're gonna be that way, then fucking jam! At least hit her, at least slow her down. Do something other than chase her and watch. And then you're gonna argue and debate whether it's a pass interference or not. It doesn't matter, you put yourself in that position for it to be perceived as pass interference because you're chasing the player. Giving you the ultimate access as the LFL took you inside the Seattle Mist locker room as we welcome you back to LFL football night here at halftime. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco in a game that the Seattle Mist lead 40 to 12. Now we expected that Seattle would have a comfortable lead at halftime, but 40 to 12 perhaps not as much as the number one ranked team are living up to their billing. While the Denver Dream, we talked about this during the commercial break, we don't really agree on this, folks, but I thought the Denver Dream had a pretty good game. You plug in a couple drop passes, the score could be a little different. Pretty good first half if you don't mind giving up 40 points. Seattle looked outstanding. They are number one for a reason. Their offense is unstoppable. But what surprised me was the bull. We knew she could run on the ground. She had 43 yards on the ground, but she caught the ball out of the backfield. They're at 33 through the air. What a first half. And on the Denver side of the ball, if anybody kind of kept them in this game, I think you got to say it was second year quarterback, Brittany Perea, completing five passes, and, and she also threw for a touchdown. No, you're right. It's not her fault. They're down 40 to 12 at halftime. I blame the head coach. Marcus Juniel, he told both of us he was going to run the football. But at halftime, their quarterback's the leading rusher with 19 yards. Their ace back, Liz Kamak, one touch. Come on, coach, give her the ball. Yeah, I'm going to stop attending those production meetings with the coaches because they're always lying to us, Bobby Huco. We came into this game expecting the Denver Dream to run the ball and keep that high-powered Seattle missed offense off the field, limiting their point total. That was not the case as Seattle racked up 40 4-0 first half points. Now let's take a look at those first half scoring plays. In the first quarter, it was Stevie the Bull Schnorr scoring on a 23-yard run, showing you some of that speed in the open field. In the second quarter, folks, that's where all the points started racking up for Seattle. On the ground, Kiara Williams and Dominique Malloy scoring on a pair of touchdown runs. Then it was KK Matheny, I should say Air Matheny, completing two touchdown passes, one to the Bull, a 14-yard dart, and then later with league MVP candidate Allie Alberts. It was Brittany Prea for Denver trying to keep them in the game, throwing a 21-yard touchdown bomb to Tahira Williams, and then later running one in from 12 yards out. That brings us to our halftime score of 40 to 12. Let's look at our stats. Denver's offense actually delivered against a very stingy Seattle defense. They had 74 first half yards and actually won the time of possession. For Seattle, it was a textbook first half with offensive coordinator Chris Michelson calling a balanced game with 69 yards on the ground and 55 through the air. Denver's defense has to get stopped in the second half. We have seen some underdogs rise in the second half. Can the Denver Dream rally? Here we go. The second half is next. Back to LFL football night as we look at our first half. Impact players, Stevie Schnorr and Brittany Perea. Perea, 19 yards on the ground, the leading rusher for Denver. That is not a good sign that Schnorr was all over the field for Seattle. I think at times we all underestimate the contribution of Stevie Schnorr. She's not one of the flashy players. She's not outlandish. So I don't think she gets the credit that she deserves in the production she's had over the years. She's probably the most reliable player on the team. A first and 10 jet sweep. Kiara Williams breaking through arm tackles in the open field down to the five. Unbelievable run. Kiara Williams, now I don't know if that was just an outstanding run or some of the worst tackling I've ever seen. At one point, there's five Denver Dream defenders around her. Count on five, one, two, three, four, five. And she breaks through all of them and breaks another tackle. And she looks like she's going coast to coast. What a way to start the second half. Kira Williams doing it. Unbelievable. That'll set up a first and goal inside the Denver three. That's a look of disgust on the face of Marcus Juniel, the defensive coordinator for Denver. 
The weakness for Denver tonight is absolutely the shoddy tackling and the entire defense just not coming to play. First and goal, Matheny under center. The handoff again to Williams. This time that defense converges, led by Isaiah Walker and Jara Floyd. Walker finally showing some aggression for that Denver defense. They've done nothing all night. Finally, they come up with a stop. I tell you what, Kiara Williams, again, a very quiet player, and she's just not going to get her due until she breaks through. Her play level is there. The personality, the confidence, and the intensity, that's what's lacking. Other than that, she has the potential to be a superstar in this league. Well, with the one-two combo of her and Malloy, Malloy was the superstar for years. Kiara Williams coming in her own this year. Second and goal, a box snap, toss back. That's Malloy. And Seattle racks up another touchdown that took less than two minutes. Great poise by KK Matheny. She bobbles the snap, gets it out to Malloy, follows her blocks. What a stock block up top right there by Williams. Malloy walks in the end zone, doesn't get touched until she's in. Great play for Seattle. Give credit to the blocking we've seen across the offensive front for Seattle. I don't think I've seen this well a textbook blocking in the history of the LFL. I know I have it. It's unbelievable. The receivers, they make the plays, the front line. Katie Whelan, I don't know where that came from this year. She's playing all fantasy every game. A two-point attempt from the three. An empty backfield for Matheny from the shotgun. Over the middle, a release play. Jade Randall converting, and Seattle now up 48 to 12. How many times can head coach and defensive coordinator Marcus Janelle let that play happen? It's a simple release play. The linebackers or safeties have to pick it up and they're letting it go all game long. Yeah, Marcus Juniel and his entire staff, including Mark Hullum, his offensive coordinator, are simply being outclassed tonight by Chris Michelson, David Price, and the group on that Seattle bench. And it's so easy to make an adjustment. The whole first half, they do that slow release play. You have the defensive end stay on them or a linebacker or even a safety come up, and you stop it, but they don't adjust. Brittany Perea comes out as the Denver offense will go to work from the 15-yard line. They did have some success late in the second quarter, so let's see if they can build on that. That's Liz Kamak in the backfield. Fakes the handoff to Kamak, finding a lane and making things happen. And Perea smacking her head against the ground. Slow to get up here. She just took a vicious hit and back on her feet. Wow, that might be more serious than we think it is. You hit that hard ground. Yeah, she's leaving. No, just getting the play from the sideline. You can see the look on her face clearly in pain with 7.20 remaining. And if you're wondering who the backup quarterback for Denver would be, that's Jessica Poole, the starting wide receiver. Great read by Perea on a naked boot like that. She stepped up, there was nothing there to throw to. She turned it up, made great yardage. Second and four, toss right. This one goes to K-Mac. K-Mac gets finally thrown to the ground by Jade Randall but does manage five yards on the carry. That's the old K-Mac that we know. She ran with authority on that play. She got outside, got five yards. Solid play again by Denver. I was being a little optimistic and giving. It was actually three yards. And look at this. That is LFL medical staff coming out and escorting, you could say pushing Brittany Perea off the field. That's Jeremy Fisher, head of medical for the LFL. Safe to assume they're going to evaluate her for a concussion. Smart move by Jeremy Fisher. You never know. She hit her head hard on the ground. He gave it a play to see how she was going to react and pull her out. Third and one from the 24. And as we mentioned, Jessica Poole as the new quarterback for the Denver Dream. Jessica Poole has skills at the quarterback position. She's just raw. She hasn't played. Third and one, another poor snap. Poole trying to evade the rush. Getting to the outside, breaking through the arm tackle of Randall. And now turning on the Jets. What an opening play for Jessica Poole. Seven yard run, 
She logged about three miles. You can see what a great athlete she is. We saw her in the first half playing wide receiver, actually beating Cortez a lot, just flying right by her. She showed a lot Where of athleticism the right there. Great play. The side? Chris Michelson yelling at his defensive God coordinator. And you could see clearly disgusted on the sideline. This is not Los Angeles. This is the Denver dream. And this is the number one ranked defense. And they're just running circles around this defense. And it's Poole going all over the place. No containment by Seattle. Poole getting faster with every replay. A first and 10 at the Seattle 19 yard line. You can tell Jessica Poole, she comes from a great Gene Poole. She's all over the field tonight on offense. I was betting the over-under on that would be two, two and a half minutes before you go for that joke, old man. That wasn't a joke, that's the truth. First and 10, make it second and six. Ball at the Seattle 15 yard line. Jessica Poole brings another dimension to this offense, but we're not certain about her arm. We haven't seen her really sling it. Let's see if Marcus Juniel and Mark Hullum, the offensive coordinator, give her an opportunity here. Head coach Juniel told me she could throw the football. We watched her in pregame. She's got a better gun than Brittany, but we'll see if they use it. An ugly looking exchange between Stacy Jackman, make it Stacy Harmon actually, back to Poole, and we've got a flag. Ball start by the offense. Five yard penalty, it remains. Second down. That's not a surprise at all. Having a center, Harmon, new quarterback comes in, new cadence, getting under, never taking a snap in a game. In fact, if I was the head coach, I would leave her in the shotgun. Don't even take a chance of a mishandled snap because this was unexpected. She did not plan to be in the game right now. I don't think the problem is Jessica Poole as much as it is Stacey Harmon. Harmon has struggled all night. It doesn't matter if it's Perea or Poole. We'll see how that plays out. This is Poole using that athleticism. But Stacy Jackman, I tell you what, she's really coming on. She was one of the star defenders last year on that Seattle Miss team. But with all the new free agent signees and the returns of people like Shay Norton, Katie Wheelan, and others, Stacy Jackman has been pushed out of the starting lineup, but tonight making an impact against Denver. Both defensive ends for Seattle, Randall and Jackman, and then Stevie Schnorr in the middle. That's a solid inside for that defense. Yeah, there's not a lot of weaknesses. I think the only one we talked about was possibly Christine Cortez at corner. We don't see her working out well there. If I was playing Seattle down the stretch, that's who I would go after. That is the weakness of the secondary. Not that she's a bad player. These guys are so stacked that she is the weakness, though. Third and eight at the Seattle 17. Finally a good snap. Poole with a lot of time in the pocket. Trying to evade Schnorr and does. Stiff arming her way. What a run by Jessica Poole. She is simply an athlete. One-on-one -on -one in open space. They cannot bring her down. I want to see her throw the football put some more. But on the ground, she can do it. Holding offense number 16. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. So that Jessica Poole six-yard run gets wiped out. You could see the frustration on the Denver sideline. Jessica Poole for a backup is making things happen right now. She could be in line for a starting position down the line. She's a talent. And Poole is the game because Brittany Perea, the starting quarterback, was knocked out. In fact, let's go down to the field for an injury report. Guys, I just spoke to LFL Medical Director Jeremy Fisher. Seattle Miss Allie Alberts has suffered a knee injury and she's been ruled out for the second half. On the Denver side, quarterback Brittany Perea has been pulled from the game under the LFL's concussion protocol. Back to you guys. Those are pretty impactful players. Allie Alberts and Brittany Perea. We will keep you guys updated on their developments. Meanwhile, Jessica Poole trying to step up in the pocket. That is Katie Whelan. Another great two-way player for the Seattle Mist. You talked about her all night blocking well from the center position. She's also very physical at DN. I love the way she attacked. She got right around, gathered the tight end, and then she went flat toward the quarterback and got to pool real quick. Great play by Katie Whelan. And Denver will call a timeout on a fourth and 15. A vicious hit on Perea. We will check on her condition when we come back.
Back to LFL football night, and in the stands, you see several Omaha Heart players coming off a big win over the Nashville Knights. In fact, the Heart are scheduled to play the Denver Dream next, so a bit of, a bit of scouting there. I love that. They have a chance to make the playoffs. We talked about it last week. If they make a run and they win out, they're in the playoffs. How about Lauren Crouch in the debut game at home that she had beating the Nashville Knights? She has resurrected that entire franchise. She has the whole LFL buzzing about her town. How can you throw a football? In fact, Marcus Juniel was talking about her before the game. He was wanting tonight to see if Brittany Perea is his franchise quarterback. It's a bad sign she's out with a concussion right now. So now a fourth and 15. We will test the arm of Jessica Poole, dropping back into the flat wide open. Complete to Liz Kamak. Kamak needed 15 yards and only picked up 12. I love the quick read, though, by Poole. She saw K-Mac open quick, got her the ball in open space, came up short for the first down, but quick and good read by the quarterback. Jessica Poole in the Denver offense, turn it over on downs as KK Matheny takes over. Ball at the 12 of Seattle. What do you do if you're Seattle now? You've got a command of this game late into the third quarter. Do you play your starters out the rest of the way? I think you do. KK Mathena, yeah, they're up 48 to 12, but she has not been that sharp through the air. I mean, she needs to sharpen her passing game against the big boys coming up. And you've got a lot of new personnel on offense, so timing is key. First and 10, a shovel pass. And I'm not sure if that wasn't a fumble. Regardless, Savannah Wood and Katie Whelan recover. An ugly looking play to start this series. Well, you mentioned it. That's the reason you don't want your quarterback in I there. I threw the ball. I threw the ball, Ms. Ruff. KK Matheny saying she threw the ball. It was not a fumble. That ball should go back to the original line of scrimmage. Let's see if the referees agree. I'm not sure if they're going to look at this. This would have to be a challenge the on the sideline. The fumble uh, is being challenged by Seattle. That play will be reviewed. There oh, you go. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Are you serious? You could see it looked like that ball came loose. I don't think that was a forward pass. The motion was there, but I think she lost control of the ball. Here's the official call. The ruling on the field. The ruling on the field has been overturned to an incomplete pass. The play, the down counts will go back to the previous spot, second down. That's Chris Michelson hamming it up after he wins the challenge. So they're going to call it an incomplete pass. The ball stays at the 12 of Seattle. I don't know if that's a good idea by Coach Michelson challenging the hostile crowd here in Denver. KK Matheny under center, a full backfield. This will go to Stevie Schnorr. This time they tie up Schnorr, but some great yards after contact. That'll be a six-yard carry by the Bull. We've seen this all night long. Here we go again. Katie Whelan, the center, another great block. Turned the middle linebacker one way. St store went right off her block the other way. So we are under 30 seconds here in the third quarter. A third and four for KK Matheny in this Seattle offense that has performed all night. You're right, though. At times, KK Matheny has been a bit rusty. But you know what? We've also seen her make some incredible throws this year. No, she's a great quarterback. I'm just saying she's not as sharp as we've seen her. That's the only thing that's missing tonight. Matheny winding up and throwing down the field. That's Kiara Williams. And Williams all the way down to the one. So on cue, KK Matheny making Bob Huco eat his words. What a throw. Perfect timing. That's what she needs, though. Williams just blew past Walker. It wasn't even a challenge. In fact, she got held by Walker, still got away. She got horse collar at the end. I didn't like Holding that. Holding by the defense, number 13. That penalty has been declined. The runner was short of the goal line. First down. So a holding call on Kelsey Cristiano as Seattle is set up at the one. Back for the fourth quarter. When your number is called tonight, step up and make a name for yourself. Speak about all the people who doubt you who say you can and go prove them wrong.
This is not about who left this team. It's not about who came back. It's about who's here right now. Now we have to play like we've never played before, ladies. This isn't just football. This is family, it's sisterhood. It's your life. It's how you live your life. Look to the girl next to you and fight for your life. Fight for the girl who's sitting next to you in this huddle right now. This is all meant to be. Every single one of you is here tonight because of a purpose. We can do this. I know we can. This is the last time I'm going to tell you that I'm going to let you down because I will not do it again. Let them understand that we are not here to play games with them. This is our game. Give it everything you have because all we got is 10 minutes. That's all we got. Back to LFL football night from Denver, Colorado for the final 10 minutes of action. On the call, Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco, providing sideline coverage, Heidi Golznick. As the Seattle Mist are set up inside the one yard line, and we've got a new quarterback. That is Stevie Schnorr on a first and goal. That looks like maybe Savannah Wood, the right tight end, jumped. False start, offense number 10. Five yard penalty, it remains first down. Indeed, the call is on Savannah Wood, the lumberjack. That'll back up Seattle to the six yard line. I understand what Coach Michelson is thinking, putting Stevie Schnorr at quarterback for a simple quarterback sneak. But why not just leave your quarterback, KK, in there, hand the ball off to Schnorr. Don't take the chances that Caden's getting oh, screwed well, up or a fumble. Popcorn. Make sure you yeah, I think Stevie Schnorr, we've seen, doesn't popcorn. have the arm, so she's not going to fool anybody. That was obviously some kind of a bull rush, pun intended. First and goal at the six-yard line. An empty backfield, this time Schnorr flanked to the left side. Jade Randall at the top of the screen. From the shotgun, looking right to Randall, now checking down. Oh! Caught and touchdown. Oh! That's how you redeem yourself. Savannah Wood on another release play. Here we go again. The defensive coordinator, Marcus Janelle, does not have anybody improvising, adapting, covering either the tight ends. They're simply wide open. Unbelievable they haven't made an adjustment. Savannah Wood has become one of the better pass receiving tight ends in the LFL. Good job. It doesn't make up for a lot of shit, but it makes up for a little bit of shit. KK Matheny getting all over Wood for her mistakes early in the game. Gives her a pass like that for a touchdown. Gets her confidence back. Seattle just killing them right now, 54 to 12. If you ever question K.K. Matheny's command of this team and her leadership, she is clearly the leader when it comes to that huddle. K.K. Matheny has struggled at times with her accuracy in this game, that time throwing at the feet of Stacy Jackman. Jackman was open quick. If, he, if she delivered the ball right in the chest, that's a touchdown. But the first time all night Denver has had coverage on the tight end release, Quintana was there and a bad pass by Matheny. We will see who comes out at quarterback. Perea potentially ruled out, and that's the case. That's the word we're getting now. Jessica Poole will be the starting quarterback the remainder of this game. Now, if you're Jessica Poole, this is the time to step up. Next woman up. You know what happened to Drew Bledsoe in New England when he got hurt? There was a guy named Tom Brady came in for the next 19 years. This is where stars are born. And it doesn't matter who you're playing. First and 10 at the Denver 15. Handoff to Liz Kamak. What a tackle. I tell you what, Jade Randall does not get enough credit for her tackling. I'm going to tell you what, that whole defense, you got to credit Mark Price, the defensive coordinator. They are putting a clinic on tonight how to tackle in football. You just blew up David Price's head so big, he's already a big dude. It's bigger now, but I got to hand it to them. This team can tackle. Their form tackling is textbook. Liz Kamak really hasn't done anything tonight. Usually is the home run threat out of the backfield for this offense. Has touched the ball maybe three or four times. I got to blame the OC, Mark Holm, on that. You got to get her the football in open space. Second and nine, pulled back to pass. The pocket collapsing, breaking through tackles. She'll be limited to a one-yard carry, but that could have been far worse for this offense. 
You mentioned Stevie Schnorr before, how she's a talent. She's all fantasy, but I really don't think she gets the credit she deserves. On defense now, she is rock solid all over the field. Great tackle there. Holds pull to one yard, but she's we don't hear about her. Yeah, Stevie Schnorr. And I tell you what, I think they're getting a bigger test. Again, I don't think that score of 54 to 12 is indicative of how competitive Denver has been. I think Seattle thought they were coming in for potentially an 80 to nothing blowout. And the score isn't close, but I tell you what, this Denver team is competing. A crossing pattern just a little high over the outstretched arms intended for Brianna Roy. I like what I saw in the pocket by Poole. She stayed in the pocket. Roy was open. Ball was delivered right there. Good coverage by Malloy, but she put the ball in a place only her receiver could catch it. That should have been brought down. So now a fourth and eight. Jessica Poole showing us she's got the arm to stretch the field. This offense will need at least eight yards to keep this drive going. The Seattle defense dropping off now. In the first half, they had almost six people at the line of scrimmage. This is Poole throwing it across her body. Nearly caught. That pass intended for Caitlin Burke, but Jade Randall separating Burke in the football. Wow. Vince McMahon might be scouting Jade Randall for the WWE, just slamming people all night long. You know what, there's a lot of quiet people that are just vicious on this roster. When you look at Kiara Williams, Jade Randall, for that matter, Ali Albert, Stevie Schnorr, these aren't big talkers, but I tell you what, on the field, you gotta fear them. Unbelievable play. All night long, I got it to hand it to Price, the defensive coordinator. He's got that team playing. They could have came in here and said, hey, we're playing Denver. Just not get hurt. We're going to kill these guys. But no, they're slamming people. First and 10 again. Stevie Schnorr is in at quarterback. I've always been curious, can Stevie throw the ball? It looks like we may find out from the shotgun. Ball to Denver 17. Ooh, an ugly looking toss. Can we get K.K. Matheny back out there if you're a Seattle fan? If I was Chris Michelson, I'd put Allie Alberts in there. She can throw the football, move around. But I think it's just opposite. I think that Stevie Schnorr just told Michelson she's going to play quarterback. He had no choice. And that look on Michelson's face says it all. I'm not sure what that was. Now, Stevie Schnorr is a pretty good rugby player. That looked like a toss back, but nowhere near the intended running back. I love Stevie Schnorr. She's a great fullback, a great defensive player, but I'm not sure she's a quarterback. Yeah, I think that point has been well solidified. Second and 19 at the Seattle 24. I thought they were going to pitch it back again. An inside handoff. That one going to number six, Christine Cortez. Cortez, a great all-around player. We saw her running back before. She makes plays happen on both sides of the ball. We only got on her a little bit on defense because that team is so talented on defense. She's the weakest one of a talented group. And here comes the quarterback, the only quarterback on this roster apparently, KK Matheny. And she returns to a third and 12, cleaning up Stevie Schnorr's mess. You got to watch when you headbutt your own players. I know a Washington Redskins quarterback that headbutted the wall and knocked himself out. You remember that? Absolutely. That is Gus Farratt against the Giants, we're completely dating ourselves. It was like 1993. And this and is K.K. Matheny in the flat. That is complete for about five yards. Looks like Bree Quintana and K.K. Phelps on the tackle. See, I like this for K.K. Matheny. It gives her a chance to spread her wings, throw the ball to Stevie Schnorr, get sharp, lead into the other games coming up this year. Setting up a fourth and 17 at the Denver 14. Clearly in firm command of this game at 54 to 12. And we are approaching the four minute mark of the fourth quarter. The only bad note for Seattle all night is the injury to Allie Alberts. And hopefully that's not serious. We haven't heard an update yet. Now it's not just Allie Alberts. We are also getting a report that Kiara Williams is also out of the game with a pretty serious leg injury. So some devastating losses on the field. A fourth and seven rolling right into the flat. Caught Schnorr ducking under defenders. That'll be enough for a Seattle first and goal. Hamming it up with the Denver crowd. Wow, I don't like what you just said about Kiara Williams. I could tell something was up. She made a great play to get down the one, but it looked like a horse collar tackle 
fell on her leg. Was it her leg or her foot? Uh, they, the report is that it's her foot, and it looked like on that horse collar tackle, she got bent back and her foot went the wrong way. Wow, I hate to hear that. So those are a couple injuries to keep an eye on if you're a Seattle Mist fan. As the season winds up, key contributors on both sides of the ball with Williams and Alberts. We've got a penalty. Substitution infraction by the defense, 12 and eight in formation. Half the distance of the goal remains first down. So Denver trying everything tonight, including playing with eight players, getting caught. Marcus Dudell not happy at all on the sideline. In fact, he even wore his lucky shark tooth tonight, but that's not working. First and goal at the Denver three. A fashion maven, Marcus Junell is not. This is KK Matheny in the flat again too low for her intended receiver. That's twice now. Her and Savannah would have not been able to connect in the end zone. We say it all the time, it's KK's feet. She's not set, she's not focused, her chest isn't pointed at the receiver, and she slung it out there wide right. It was a bad pass. Now 2.50 remaining in the fourth quarter, a second in goal. The only reason Seattle would want points here is in case of a tiebreaker that does factor in to the playoff picture. And let me tell you, head coach Chris Michelson, he is a detail-oriented coach. He hates to see passes like that that should be touchdowns roll into becoming incompletions. A second in goal, KK Matheny tripping up. That was you. Why would you come backwards? Hit her! It's a drive ball! KK Matheny, regardless of the score, coaching up her team as Seattle leads this one 54 to 12. Back to LFL football night, and next week we head south to Atlanta, Georgia, in old rivalry, the Chicago Bliss versus the Atlanta Steam. Atlanta better watch out. They better be looking over their shoulder. There's some teams right behind them, and they had an upset loss versus Los Angeles. Yeah, there's a lot of surprise teams. I like the way Nashville's playing in the Eastern Conference despite their loss to Omaha, and certainly Omaha has become a threat. And we've got a false start down on the field. Offside, defense 19, five yard, half the distance of the goal, it remains third down. An offside call on Danielle Brockman, one of the rookies on this team, and she's got size. That front line for Denver has so much potential. They've got to be coached up very raw right now. Right, they're getting pulled right there. She's got talent, she's got unlimited talent, but she has no discipline on the line. You got to watch the football being snapped before you go. I like the recruiting job Denver has done. They've gotten bigger and stronger. They just got to get smarter now. Third and goal at the three yard line. Dominique Malloy in the backfield to the edge and cutting back. Touchdown Seattle. Another quiet contributor. Dominique Malloy. Dominique Malloy will get the headline about scoring the touchdown, but the lumberjack, Savannah Wood, absolutely destroyed the defensive end of Denver to allow Malloy to walk in the end zone. The lumberjack in action. Yeah, that front line of Seattle is very physical, led by Katie Whelan and the lumberjack. As you mentioned, it's Savannah Wood. Don't forget about Stacy Jackman as well. They can all block. You got to give credit to the unsung hero tonight. That's coach Morgan Davidson, who stresses technique in his blocking. In his shorts, he does that. Yeah, Morgan Davidson, by the way, the only human being on the planet that does not own a single pair of pants. That is a true fact. Here's the two-point conversion. Dominique Malloy, nobody out there. And she'll extend Seattle's lead. They have broken. The 60-point mark at 62 to 12. Marcus Juniel, he's not going to be happy at all with his defense. Look at him, they're on skates going backwards into the end zone. Somebody got from the outside has to attack Malloy and turn her back inside. Nobody does that. That looked like the left defensive end, Kelly White of Denver, was completely lost. And as a result, Seattle up 62 to 12. Marcus Janelle wanted to keep this game close going into the fourth quarter and let his quarterback, Brittany Pryor, have a chance to win it. Now she's out, pulls in the game, but their defense let up 62 points already. 
Yeah, that defense has got to get better, although offensively, I've kind of liked what I've seen. Despite not using Liz Kamak, we know what she can do. And Jessica Poole, you never root for injuries, obviously, but this could be a silver lining in the cloud for the Denver team. She could be the quarterback of the future. I like her as a wide receiver if Perea comes back. She's a great receiver, too. First and 10, crossing pattern, caught! That is Brianna Roy. Touchdown, Denver. Can you dig it? Get burned. Roy goes flying by. Can you dig it? Can you dig it, Mitch? Oh, my goodness. Look at Jessica Poole dropping back, not hesitating. Kind of an ugly ball, but Brianna Roy, great instincts. Can you dig it? Trying to track down Brianna Roy. And Roy not having any of it as Denver scores and there's at least it's some momentum in a 62 to 12 game previously now 62 to 18. i'll tell you what i can dig i like jessica pool a quarterback she hung in the pocket threw a strike to roy right on time over can you dig it heck yeah and denver doesn't have long to lick its wounds and find which quarterback is going to start the rest of the way they go to omaha in a couple weeks nine seconds remaining the two-point attempt Jessica Poole showing that athleticism. And now Denver posting. I think that's the big story. Denver posting 20 points on the Seattle miss. No, there's hope there. Even though they gave up 62 points, I like the quarterback. I like a wide receiver. I like the running backs. I like some of the linemen. I mean, they got talent. Yeah, I don't think you can go away if you're a Denver fan completely hanging your head at this game. You got to come into it realistically. The Seattle missed are arguably the best team on paper Ever. in the history of the LFL. And you're a brand new franchise. Despite that, you competed. The Denver Dream found a few new stars, but the real headlines were around the Seattle Mist, the play of Stevie Schnorr, Kiara Williams, Savannah Wood. The number one ranked team in the LFL is cranking on all cylinders. For my partner, Bobby Huco. For our sideline reporter, Heidi Golsnig. All the people in the truck, Mitch Mortaza. Thank you for joining us on LFL Football Night. We'll see you next week from Atlanta, Georgia.